All right. Gonna try another strainer pour today. I pour my paints through this kitchen strainer, sink strainer. That's all it is. Already got the base coat down. It's a 14 inch by 14 inch canvas. The colors I'm going to be using, and it's probably a, a strange color combination. I don't know. I just grab some colors. But anyhow, I'm using Liquitex Basics Iridescent White. This white that I've got down as a base coat is just regular uh, Artist Loft Flow Acrylic White paint. But I've got some Liquitex Basic Iridescent White, Liquitex Basics Naphthol Crimson, Liquitex Basics Silver, Artist Loft Burnt Sienna, Liquitex Basics Light Pink, and Liquitex Basics Prism Violet. And we're just going to see how that comes out with a string pour. I really have no idea what it's going to look like. Let me get these paints out of the way. If I don't, I'll be knocking them all over my arms and making more of a mess than what I'm doing to begin with. So anyhow, like I said, this is just nothing more than a kitchen strainer. It's got slots on the side, some holes in the bottom, and a little dimp so, dimple so that the paint will kind of come out of the bottom a little bit there. I'll set this down in the middle. Or what appears to be the middle and I really don't know if there's any particular rhyme or reason to this like I said I start out with some of the Nanthal Crimson Just pour it in here go around in a circle cover the bottom of the strainer It's already starting to come up at the bottom. And then next color is going to be some silver. And then some of the burnt sienna. I've done a few of these strainer pours. The one and only clock I've ever done I did with a strainer pour. And uh, it came out kind of cool. So I figured I'd give it a shot again. Get them in order. And now some of the light pink. I really don't know how these colors are going to react with each other because I'm not the best in the world at that figuring out how the colors mix with each other get these over this way so I don't spill them on my arms so we'll see how it works out Next, some of this prim, prism violet. It's kind of a pretty color. And then some of the iridescent white.
that sit for a minute. And I'll put some more in while I take a swallow of my coffee. Those who know me know my know that I'm a huge coffee freak. If you don't know me, now you know I'm a coffee freak. I guess that's left over from the Air Force after so many years in the Air Force. Uh, I learned how to drink coffee pretty well. All right, let's go back in with this Daphthol Crimson. All my paints are mixed with Floetrol, probably at about a two to one ratio. One part paint, two parts Floetrol. In this case I used about one ounce of Floetrol and about a half an ounce of paint in each one of them. No silicone in it. And some silver. Check to make sure I'm still in frame here. Yeah. <clears throat> Back with some of the burnt sienna. I like this burnt sienna. It's not, I don't know, it gives it a southwest look, I guess. Not really brown. I guess if you want to say it's brown, it's a light brown. It's not colors that I, at least the, the brownish colors are ones that I don't use a lot of. I have in the past, but I haven't used them a lot. Back in with the pink again. And it's a very light pink. It's a very subtle pink. Almost a, kind of makes me think of flesh. It's kind of a flesh color, but they call it light pink. And back with the prism violet. some more iridescent white. Crimson again. You just finish these up now for about enough to put one more layer of paint in each one, for each one rather, another enough for one more pour, so to speak. silver. Just 
Drain and pour is going to look pretty cool when they come out right. When they don't come out right, they look like a mess. This one looks like it's going to be pretty, pretty decent. Time will tell. It's all said and done. Use the last of this burnt sienna here. of the pink. And the violet. Not, a, not much of that left in there. But maybe when next time I do one of these. Excuse me. I'm going to stand this up on a little small cup just to bring it up off the canvas a little bit more. It might help help it flow out a little bit more instead of getting trapped underneath because I think some of it's getting trapped underneath. All right, here's the last of the iridescent white. That could be the way I'm pouring it in there too. Uh, around the edge as opposed to towards the middle of it. I don't know. Like I said, I'm trying out new things every time I do this. It seems like a, or do a painting, it seems like I'm trying out a new one. Maybe someday when I grow up, I'll get them right. Who knows? It's kind of cool looking though. So far. All right, let me carefully lift this up and off of there and see what we get. Sorry if my hands are blocking the view here. There's, I'm limited on where I can put my tripod and my camera. That middle. Let's give it a little torque before I try and stretch it out. Just to get rid of any bubbles. I re really don't see any bubbles, but uh, they're there, probably little ones. to do some stretching out here and see what I can come up with. Hopefully I'll keep the basic shape. Let's go from side to side here first. Bring it right up to the edge and then I'll bring it back to the middle. I don't want to destroy that little design right in the middle. 
think that it looks pretty cool. Hopefully I'll be able to keep it. to hold on to these sometimes because they get so slippery on the edges. Each time I bring the paint back to the middle, the weight of the paint back to the middle to try and keep the composition at least symmetrical or as, as symmetrical as I possibly can. It looks like turkey feather, doesn't it? That's what my initial impression of it is. Not necessarily the colors, but the shape. Alright, let's get the corners here. I'm going to lose some of that purple. Violet, rather. Bring it back down here way back in the middle again. Seems to be holding this shape rather nicely. I was a little hesitant about that. And the colors don't look all that bad with each other. Definitely a different color scheme than what I normally would use. <laughs> normally. I really don't have a normal. Let's get this weight of this paint back to the middle. Try and keep that composition right there. I like that little flower look in the middle. Not bad. Some grits. I need to get up. Get my cover corners covered a little bit better. I'm just wiping my hands off right now. So my rags and stuff are over here behind me. I got a stick here. See if I can't get these corners covered a little bit better without making it look too ugly. I get the drips off the edges down there at the bottom. I'm doing that. The reason I'm doing that is uh, for those of you that do this kind of acrylic paint pouring, you'll know that uh, as the as the painting sits, it tends to drip down the, the sides here a little bit, and that will pull the paint off of the painting if you don't get it off of there. And changes your composition over a period of time. So that's why we do this.
problem is being able to see on the back side of it here, so I just have to guess and hope I'm getting them all. So I really can't see back there. No, I think it looks pretty cool. I like this middle part. Let me torch it one more time and then I'll uh, get my gloves off and bring you in for some close-ups. The torching is nothing more than just to get rid of some bubbles that might be there. Maybe this way just a little bit. Alright, gloves off, I'm going to pause here for just a minute, but I'll be right back. Alright, I'm back. Love that middle. some some form of a flower the now I didn't use any of the you'll see some sparkling in there that's probably from the silver paint although it wasn't any of this extreme sheen deco art paint that I like to use but that silver has made it sparkle a little bit I like that violet too, that prism violet. It's pretty. This one came up pretty decent, I think. Sorry about that. It's my flash reflecting in the paint right now. It's really sparkling down in here. See what I mean about that light pink? It's almost a flesh tone. It actually came out Pretty nice, I think. Pretty nicely. I didn't know what to expect because lots of times I don't get my consistencies right. I know that's one of my uh, thorns in my side. Because different techniques take a different type of consistency when you mix the paints. I think I got these pretty close to being what they needed to be. A few little cells that that's from the the white paint that I used as my base coat and the flow trawl. It uh, tends to uh, make some cells all on its own. Like I said, I didn't put any silicone in this. I don't do a whole lot of paints with silicone in them. Sometimes I do. But I think this one looks pretty cool. Getting some cells on this edge down here. But the pattern held over on the edge. All right, well, that's my painting for today. 
August 22nd, 2021. Like I said, it's a strainer pour on a 14 inch by 14 inch canvas. Hope you all like it. Enjoy your evening. Let me know what you what you think in the comments. God bless. Bye.